All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Curio Art Stream number two. I'm Daniel, and I'm here with Max. Do you want to say hi? Yeah. Hey, guys. I'm Max, um, also known as uh, Marisol Vangas from Curio Cards, here to uh, hang out, do some drawing. Yeah. Yeah. So let's uh, start with just like a drawing of the date. And then people will just be filtering in. We'll be looking at the live chat. So definitely write anything if you want to incorporate it. And then we're just going to kind of play with this overlay between our two drawing surfaces. The um, physical one, which I have on the bottom, and then the digital one. Maybe, Max, you want to describe like your, your uh, setup or what are you drawing on? Yeah, for sure. Um, so my... My setup today is a, um, I think it's like a Samsung tablet. I think it's an S6 or S9 or something. Anyway, it has a uh, one of these like sensitive styluses. It's really awesome for, um, um, yeah, essentially uh, capturing more artifacts as I as I draw. So um, yeah, and I'm using this app called Aggie, um, and uh, yeah, it's awesome web-based so you can easily uh send it across the internet to be aggregated into this live stream cool and i just have a camera pointing down on my desk <laughs> and okay let's see Oh man, it feels so weird to draw on the tablet. It's mm -hmm. it's too smooth. <laughs> yep. Oh wait, that was I was uh, I was mirroring your your lettering, but it's all good. Continue. Okay. Nice. Yeah. If anyone wants to write in the chat, though, we're literally just doodling, and then we'll kind of think of fun stuff to draw about, talk about. Daniel, do you have a favorite uh, uh, art supply or a I, tool for drawing? I think I've had phases. I think my uh, gateway office supply was probably erasers and uh, mechanical pencils of different diameters, kind of like that. And then was like, oh, or you could just have the pen and then never have the opportunity to erase. And then at that point, I kind of got into the pen collecting. So I'd say just a good set of pens. <laughs> nice. What about you? Oh, man. Um, I go through phases. I mean, I have like, you know, massive studio with like every art supply and um, office supply you can possibly imagine, like collections of like scissors and erasers and, you know, different brushes and, um, but yeah, right now my main phase, I think my two favorite supplies or materials are glitter and like tape, like tape, like different types of tape. I probably have like, I don't know, 50 different types of tape. I've just been <laughs> taping, using them on making art and then putting paint on it and adding glitter. And it's just like, it's really amazing experience i i uh i definitely um never thought i would ever get into those as um art making uh 
tools, but it's pretty, pretty fun. Let's do one where um, you draw on the left or the right, and I'll draw on the top or the bottom. Okay. Um, here, let me pull up the preview. Okay. So pick a side and a theme. Okay. Here, I'll, uh, so on the I'll I'll take the left. How about that? Okay. And then. Um, What's the theme? <laughs> What's the theme, guys? Let's just, we can do no theme. We can try with a theme later. If anyone suggests one, so we can just do a freestyle and just see where we're at. Yeah. All right, I'll do the right side. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, I recently read the uh, Master and his Emissary, Gilchrist, about the left and right brain. Oh, nice. And kind of that left-right distinction. Simplification as binaries are, but brings a lot of interesting materials into the discussion, like about art and science. Yeah, um, what were some uh, some takeaways for uh, in that in that book? Maybe that it's just a uh, yes and with different kinds of thinking, and they get revved up and down in their importance situationally. And maybe that relates to what we already know about neuroimaging, just like these different modes of thoughts that kind of like rev up and then rev down in the brain. And some of those having like evolutionary basis, some having learned basis, really deep cultural patterns. And then kind of there's kind of like a like a macro and micro how does society support the distinction of uh science and you know rationality versus art and irrationality and that and narrative and that kind of more mythical mode of interpretation. Yeah, I was thinking about how this process could produce NFTs or leverage NFTs. Um, you know, give you know the NFT could be like a just a badge to get into the <laughs> get to be able to create or co-create or um, be used to vote on content or um, that's one side of it, and the other side is on the producing. You know some art that people can take away as well. Um, yeah, there's lots of fun, fun ideas to think about.
Yeah, definitely. Let's talk about that. Um, so I have, here's a few thoughts. Oh, also, how about you do the right side of the page all to the left side? And okay. then my hand won't. Well, I mean, yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. Yeah. Okay. I can move, cool. since it's kind of like a Photoshop interface, I can actually kind of move, or should be able to move this over there. So, and What percentage of your art is material versus digital right now? Um, oh, man. Um, geez, that's a tricky question. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't do too much. Oh, maybe I do digital. I don't know, man. It's so hard to say. It all kind of blends together. I'm trying to categorize those experiences. Um, probably more digital, I think. Um, you know, I take a lot of pictures and, um, you know, drawing, drawing a lot on the Remarkable tablet. Um, and so, um, yeah, there's definitely... I think I kind of wish I could do more physical stuff. It's just, you know, the, the, um, that, that requires me to get into the studio more. So, um, ideally it would be more physical for sure, just to go, be able to go through that experience. So, um, yeah, you, you mostly do, uh, work on paper. Do you, do you, uh, do any other mediums or. I think, uh, if Google slides count, then more there <laughs> than paper, but for for classical art, just yeah. paper. I I actually made art using PowerPoint. I mean, a long time ago, when I was just exploring what mediums we could make art with, and um, so I was really interested in you know taking bizarre mediums. Like, so I made art like you know in Excel, changing colors of tables and you know making formulas that populate based upon different interactions or just you know having uh, different interpretations of, of those as mediums um reinterpreting them in different ways well it's been pretty fun but yeah i mean uh yeah i could see uh google uh sheets being a awesome art tool Oh, okay. So, but you asked about how could, um, you know, how could NFTs and community tools and meaning kind of arise from an art stream? Yes. So one thought was a website where you log in with your Web3, so your MetaMask or whatever, and then that website hashes a QR code every second with your, um, which address you are, and then like the time code. So then, and then I would have that website up and then be screen capturing it in OBS. So every frame of this video could be uh, with a unique QR code. So just start, gotcha. start there, just so that the, that would help with like information integrity. So that you can now, someone will say, "Oh, but here's this video of you saying this." You go, "No, I use this QR code, so that's not a real video of me." So that's one use, and then um, people could kind of like, I don't know, look at QR site QR codes or make NFTs from the JPEGs of that frame. Yeah, I was thinking there could be like some consensus of um, which ones should be minted, and then. Like it have some engagement like metrics. You're like if you engage, you get like first dibs or it's um like a sorted whitelist, like white uh like some type of like whitelist that you could acquire them or bid bid on them or I think there's some pretty fun um fun fun things there.
Well, that reminds me of the kind of uh, the lines, the large line drawings in the regions that are like only visible from a high air balloon. I'm not sure, you know, what their official names are, but those kind of designs. That's always interesting, like which themes, which font or uh, styles get associated with which times, which ones will be associated with with uh, contemporary times. Oh, yeah. What do you think? You're more into the real font game. Oh, God. Yeah, it's... I wish I knew more about fonts. <laughs> um, I've been... Um, yeah, I've been asked like a lot about fonts, but I'm I'm just more into making them rather than like the history of them. Like there's some that I kind of like, but I'm not necessarily I was more in the like see how many I can crank out game. <laughs> so um but yeah, I feel like um we'll go more towards uh more emojis, I think, and like custom emojis. And I feel like um, yeah, I don't, I don't really know where fonts are going or what, but I have a feeling we'll, we'll, we'll start abbreviating a lot of things. I think also with like BCI headsets, um, we'll be able to communicate a lot more effectively, um, almost like brain to brain interface stuff. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how like, you know, humans use, uh, lettering and letters and, you know, the written word and, you know, I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of major, major shifts as this technology has become available. Yep. Let's do one brain to brain. So have a, have some kind of point in the middle um, where it's going to be like a brain crossover. Okay. Okay. Like in the center, um, the center of the drawing, a, yeah, a yeah. brain crossover, you take the right side. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'll right I'll make it aligned on the video, but yeah, just generally in the center. Oh wait, it's there's a little bit of delay. <laughs> yeah. You won't see it. it I'll, I'll make it line up. Just you okay. draw on the right side, and then make it kind of converge towards the center point. Hmm. <sighs> Oh man, this is fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I had a, uh, a really awesome um, access this. Um, public access station with like all this, all these cameras, like there was probably like a hundred cameras in there and good internet and all the, all the materials you would need to uh, do live video processing. Um, so it just like stack up lots of people's drawings. So we'd like set up cameras on their, on their drawings. I think one time I might've had like 10 cameras going at the same time. And um, like 10, yeah, people, just 10 people in the studio doing partner drawing. Yeah, yeah, and it's That's it, it was all live mix too, so it's just like stacking up all these layers, and we put on some some tunes and and hang out. Um, and uh, yeah, it was it was just such a such a fun experience. But um, yeah, the setups were taking a long time. <laughs> it, it was a once a week thing. It was a pretty big commitment to um, to uh, to get people in there. Um, yeah, really, really awesome. The the it's on YouTube. It's called the called the drawing show and um i might have done like 30 episodes i did it for for a couple years yeah that sounds very chill i've just yeah. liked the sort of memories good times parties and meeting at places trains doing a drawing 
some of those drawings we still have, other ones the other people have. That's like, that's what's cool about group art. You know, you get to have something that comes away from the relationship. And then I guess that question comes back to the question you raised earlier. Like, how do you do that? With the physical piece of art, you get the, um, you know, who loves the baby more question. But with the digital art, like, how do you make it for both people, maybe, or all the people? Like, fractionalized ownership of the one collective piece of art or brainstorm that people make? Like, everyone collaborates on a mind map or a draw partner drawing, and then they all share like a fractional i don't know or a multi-sig about it or something yeah i feel like there almost needs to be a platform in which um that handles like like where let's see we reshare the content and someone gets value out of it like that could go back to the you know the holders of the people that captured that experience or something um so yeah, there's some there's some really awesome ideas. Cool. So I made them kind of line up. It's like the person oh, on, the nice. on the left is like connecting to this one that you drew. I love like getting characters to draw other characters like <laughs> oh okay cool uh, that's like, classic escher okay okay yeah I it's just so yeah that. i love that yeah i've been doing these like inverted arms for like probably like 10 years or something They're just so funny I need some mirrors. I just realized. Okay. Cool. You know, this is actually like, it's kind of like AR because I'm looking down and I just see kind of like the person walking alone. But then yeah. when I look at the screen, it's uh there's like a demon or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> the Furby, Kirby. I don't know what that is. Yeah. I know, I know. I'm like, it's a cloud being. I'm, I'm putting some ears on him. Um, yeah, it should come up yeah, pretty soon. Definitely like it. Tufty or something like that. Okay, now, yeah. Oh, nice! It's like <laughs> particle, particleized. Um, Cool. That, that yeah, for this. years we do these uh, coffee shop drawing sessions. Like, just bring a couple reams of paper and a bunch of pens, and let people go at it. It's it's always so much fun. Or also, if you want to like do that at a bar, people are like, "What? Like you're actually doing something?" Because usually, you know, just people are just getting tore up, and it's kind of the whole point. Um, but yeah, when you start giving giving people activity, you start, you know. Um, start getting uh, some really interesting interactions. People are like, oh, you can actually like do engaging things here. What? Hey, keep, keep it where it is. I'm trying to do some okay. detail on your side. So you get the lines on your side. I'm only looking at the screen, not even down. Yeah. So actually, this reminds me of his uh, dissecting insects. 
So usually when we're dissecting, it's just like you're looking down the microscope um, and then dissecting it that way. But then sometimes the fancy setups, there's better zoom. So it actually has a camera. And then it's like you're doing the dissection, but you're looking to like one of the sides. So then like it's one is like, oh, you're over microscope. That's like, well, I don't know. That's like, well, that reminds me of just looking at the paper and drawing. But then here I'm looking at the, sc your, the screen to see your drawing. Oh, man, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, that is so cool. That is so cool. The level of precision on that is such a trip. And then when you cover it up, it's like you just see your hand. It's really interesting. Cool. Oh, nice drawing. Let's do another one with, uh, you, I think it just, it works a little better with you doing the right side. Okay. Another one. Yeah. 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 That's fine. All right. We're both, uh, we're both, uh, left-handed. I noticed. Yeah, I guess that's true. I am left-handed. Um, here, I'll do a clear screen. That's such a good, here, I'm going to save this. This, this little drawing is very nice. Yeah. If people have a suggestion also for like a, a theme or something, we're just going to chill and do it. Nice. We've got two people watching. Um, here, I'm going to select it all. Um, you know, you can just listen to music in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So should we do a theme? Yeah. So you take right, I'll take left. And then what should the theme be? Um, Ooh, um, maybe space or ah, that's too general. Um, um, oh man, there's just so many ideas I have. <laughs> um, Think of my first thought is like infinity, but that's like too hard yeah. to capture. Yeah. Let's just do it. Let's just do infinity. Okay. It's your first thought. First thought. Oh man, I really like the pressure sensitivity of this. Cool. Yeah, like you could do, you could use OBS, capture webcam, and then capture your web, your uh, tablet capture, and then just use that as your video. Oh yeah. Like for when you're on a video chat, that'd be very, very chill. Someone should make a OBS plugin to mint NFTs. <laughs> oh man, that'd be great. Yeah, that's true. Or I mean, or the plugin with the QR code that could be OBS. So it could be like a verified plugin. I, I don't know. Just if it just showed the hash of the most recent block or something, some way to timestamp it really well. Or give a trusty, trusting timestamp. Oh, well, you could have it post like a state or like a screenshot of the view to like IPFS or something, you know, from OBS. That's a pretty, uh, that's pretty. Yeah. Yeah. You could, you could have a screen capture of a uh, block explorer with blocks rolling in. But I think it'd be, it'd look good visually if it was just in the corner. You could just have the QR and then have it so that like, if anyone tried to crop out the QR, I mean, obviously there's more <laughs> advanced versions yeah. of what this could be, but like, it would just be really cool. I feel oh, like yeah. 
because otherwise there's going to be like false positives and false negatives for what people said when. And that's not really conducive to having good speech, even if people are using pseudonyms or not. Yeah, for sure, for sure. All right. I made a, I made a, uh, oh, what was that? I'm going to ask a question from the live chat. Yeah. Zoros asks, digital art tablet question. If I remember correctly, Wacom Cintiq Pro used to be the holy grail. Is that still the case, or do you think the more accessible options nowadays, i.e. iPad, are good enough tools for professionals? Oh, man, I think um, it's comparable. Like, just seeing the iPad Pros and using them very briefly, I think they're comparable. Um, I have the Note 10, um, and that's incredible for drawing. And same with this, the Samsung, uh, you know, this this tablet was just a few hundred bucks and it's just, it's a really a profound experience. You get, you know, good enough sensitivity to be um, a very dangerous artist. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't, I don't think you need those Cintiqs. Those are so expensive, like, and it's limited to, um, you know, a laptop or a desktop situation. So um, yeah, I don't necessarily think you need those, but you know, I'm sure there's some some bells and whistles that you can, uh, you know, they have like custom buttons and a variety of different uh, styluses. So it just depends to what you know, how uh, how hardcore you want to get with your uh, with your art creations. Um, but yeah, just oh man, just getting um, you know, just getting in the game and making art, I'd say, yeah, get one of these few hundred dollar tablets and, um, or, you know, one of these uh, older note phones, it's definitely good enough. Okay, let me ask another question. What about making POAPs? So could you maybe just describe what is a POAP and like how would it come into play here in, in this Curio community or generally? Ooh, yeah, POAPs. Uh, what's this kind of proof of attendance, I think? Yeah, proof, proof of attendance of, protocol. Um, yeah, I like that idea. Um, it's kind of like a receipt for your experience. Um, I tend to think of it as like your, um, you know, it's like it's proving that you're there. But then, um, you know, what if it's just a, a badge to prove status within a community? That's pretty cool. But, you know, what other... What other engagement could that have? You know, I think that's where it gets a little more interesting. Um, you know, how do you, um, you know, give other, uh, you know, get other other users and neighboring communities interested in what you're doing through that? Um, I like asking, like, how do you get the different user types to align values? You know, I think about that as well. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, the interesting about NFTs is that you don't know how other communities are going to want to integrate them or use them. And, um, but having that, um, that scaffolding in place is really, really awesome. So yeah, I think um, for bigger community or for communities as they grow using those PO apps as, as ways to uh, provide accessibility, um, and different types of resources or, um, you know, you see a lot of artists having kind of like, they call them like fetishistic articles. Like they'll have like a zine or they'll have like a physical, you know, book or um, some memoir of the experience. Um, so yeah, maybe the PO apps give you access to um, other, uh, physical goods or a discount on physical goods or free coupon codes to check out. Oh man, no guardrails there. That's what's so exciting about all this. Here, here's a few thoughts on that. So when you said like, kind of like something like adjacent communities, why they care made me think about like the community of baseball ticket stubs. It's like, 
you're in the league, you're in the same sport, or at least you're in the broader category of sports. She kind of understands the um, community. So then having, I don't know, just that was very, you know, it has meaning for the internal community, for the person themselves, for their relationships, for their kind of community level. But then also part of it, maybe there'll be private NFT chains. So there'll be like zero knowledge, like this person's in this community, but they don't have any external information on their NFTs. They're private, like ZK NFTs. But then also part of it is about public on layer one. So just like, what is that gonna do for people's public and private um, presentation? Mm. How yeah. and then what to what what will the role be for kind of back channels and uh privacy chains, alt identities? To what extent is this gonna like really center stage one identity, your dot eth identity? Yeah, that's interesting. That's really interesting. So what are you drawing on the right side? Um, I don't know. I, I really have no idea. I wish <laughs> um, it's, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question. Cool. I, I'm definitely, um, thinking about, you know, infinity. I, maybe I'm thinking about something that's like creating time. It's like a machine that creates time or a machine that creates space or something. Um, I've been doing a lot of these like standalone forms, um, not in this particular shape, but I think of them as kind of like a, it's like a standalone type of uh, organic machine or something. Um, yeah, I minted some NFTs um, on uh, recently. Um, and yeah, they're kind of these standalone figures I, was, I drew on. Um, I sketched out on the digital uh, tablet, the remarkable tablet and i'm like what are these things i'm like i just i just don't know i really let someone else determine and yeah <laughs> let some art historian figure it out if it's ever relevant in the future but it's, yeah just really enjoyable to make uh yeah it's more about the process and less about the content for me i think so Yeah, I mean, maybe that's a good question. Um, well, just like, uh, like a POAP. So figure out what tools are being used by the community and low cost. Like, I, I believe that, I don't know if they use test nets or other chains, but I've gotten POAPs that were, that were zero cost. I don't know if there was a cost paid by the organizers of the event though and then or just but find something that's a reasonable technical compromise and then let's just do it and people who are there are there like that's one way just to kind of do it and just let it be what it is um i don't know i mean anyone in the chat can just give like a thought we're just like literally chilling so any suggestions, any like cool things that you've seen work or not work in other communities? Uh, I, yeah, I, I like it. Also, they're very different like color schemes. Yeah, a lot of the NFT craze is, um, I'm starting to think it's, people want to be part of the narrative or part of the, sto the story. Um, you know, and you see like these crypto punks and you see the bored apes go, like translate into other types of mediums. Um, you know, people are starting to write stories about them and, um, you know, put them on the products and all sorts of other good they're translating into other forms. And I think that's, you know, people are, when it, when people realize that they're like, Oh man, I should definitely 
like bet or gamble on these things. Um, Cause if there's a chance that, you know, this is used um, through facets of reality, the, you know, the upside is huge. Like that's, that could be a very, very awesome investment. Um, and I mean, that's just like typical with the art world too. You're like, you know, is this person's story going to be, uh, you know, told in schools and, uh, you know, are institutions going to want to um, acquire this, put that, put, you know, put these works of art in their museums. And so you're kind of gambling on like, you know, what, what's the narrative that's going to be told or what's the story for um, the future. Yeah. So I've been thinking, I've been thinking about that a lot. Yeah, it's, it's also one of the things I was thinking, like, you know, history used to be written by the victors, and now it's like, now it's like history is being written with, like, you know, digital communities and uh, members of these these communities, and it's like, um, yeah, so I wonder where that, that will end up, some interesting places, that's for sure. Yeah. Different digital bubbles and uh, spheres of experience that they interact with and like t sets of facts that they get, tools they use, ideas they use, words. Um, oh, I got a question for you. Do you have do you have a favorite work of art that you've um, you've made that stands out to you? Let's um, start a new drawing. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Any, look at it. Looks good. Here, let me uh, let it catch up, and I'll. Um, oh shit! I think I might have froze. Mm. Do we freeze? No, I think it should be good. Okay. There we go. There we go. Okay. Yeah, like it's all caught up. kind of like a water droplet shape on my side, hamburger on your side, like a seven by seven from In and Out. <laughs> yeah, I got this okay. like space hamburger. Um, New one. Yeah, that's clear. All right. So. Okay. Um, yeah, I was just wondering if you had a favorite work of art you've you've made in your uh, uh, drawing drawing career. Oh, and uh, theme. What theme should we uh, should we consider? Anything that someone writes in the chat, we can definitely do. Let's do um. Future of NFTs. So future of NFTs. Okay. Yeah, if, NFT future. On you have the right side. I'll take the left side. Ooh, that's a good one. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Future of NFTs. Oh yeah. Um, what? Yeah. Have you had a significant oh. uh, work work of art that you've uh, felt was like your favorite or? Um. Honestly, I like the complicated ones. I kind of look back wistfully to when I had or felt like I had more time to do repetitive things, but I don't really have one favorite. I kind of look back at each one, just think about the context it was made in, kind of years it spans. I'm sure you had kind of different life phases with art kind of across them. Or what about you? Um, I think I have a favorite. It's my kind of first, my first project um, that transitioned from like making physical stuff to making more like idea-based art. Um, so 
you know, went to art school and I was making works of art that were just like stuff and more like based around neuroses and like just, just things. And then I, um, I just got a lot of like criticism that my stuff wasn't interesting. And I'm like, like, Oh man. And then, you know, I struggled with like having to pick a certain medium, um, you know, where you have to go very specific, either you had to pick like sculpture or drawing or painting or printmaking. Um, and then you would fit your ideas into that. Um, and I had a major, um, problem with that because I had so many ideas and I just kind of realized I couldn't fit my ideas into, um, um, these mediums are, so I proposed this project to, um, there's this like gallery space at, uh, Chico state campus and you can apply to be in shows and they asked for, um, you know, a portfolio. And I'm like, well, I just want to do like a conceptual work. And I was taking a lot of philosophies. So I was really inspired by this, this concept of, um, um, truth and happiness. They're kind of like, this is an old concept, um, of like truth, truth and happiness are kind of like on a scale. Like <laughs> I was like really interested in, in like thinking about this idea. And, um, so I was telling this with my friend and she's like, we should do an art show. And she's thinking like, we just put stuff in the show and then, you know, have some wine and cheese and that. And I'm like, let's do a let's do an idea piece of art. So, um, so we proposed, um, basically making two, um, collages. And one was basically what we thought would be considered like happiness in our life. And then opposing it would be th things like values and imagery that relate to truth. So on, so we spent like a couple months just Googling images <laughs> And uh, putting them into two folders, like truth and happiness. Um, and, you know, and happiness, like lots of like cupcakes and, um, you know, food and like drugs and, uh, you know, things that were like happy and like in, in some way to us. Um, and they were different, you know, for each of us. And then truth was like poverty, famine um you know earthquakes you know other terrible global events and um and i found someone that you know let us print out these uh these individual um um you know images that then we could collage and there were huge murals basically by the time we're done they're about four feet tall and then about uh 30 foot long so there were these giant uh collage imagery and we cut out like each thing so we went through this process and anyway that was that was a really interesting experience um just going through that and um so we you know we didn't really make you know art in our normal style for that the day we hung those those pieces up um the first two people that walked in there just like instantly started crying <laughs> when they saw it I was like, oh man, like, what have we done? Like, they were like, this is like one of the best works of art. Um, you know, cause it's, you, you know, you see these like terrible images on one side and you see these like equally terrible images of like happiness and kind of like overindulgence and things that like, you know, make people happy. I mean, we had like kittens and puppies and things like that too, but you know, having these things like facing each other where when you're looking at one of them, your backs to the other one, um, you know, it's, yeah, it, it caused a lot of emotional reactions when people saw it. And then I realized like, man, I'm like only going to make idea based art from now on um, and not, you know, start out the medium first. So, mm. so yeah, that was, that was probably my favorite work of art just because it opened the door. Um, and I think that was in 2006. I made that one, maybe 2005, um, but truly profound. Um, and to this day, people are like, oh man, that was crazy, crazy, <laughs> crazy work of art. Wow. That's really like powerful about the position that you have to be in to like look or you can kind of split the middle but then what are you really seeing? 
Yeah, and yeah, even when we, you know, because it was catered by the school, they had put in a bunch of money for for snacks, and they might even had wine at the time. Um, but then we, you know, we're like, where where do we put it in the in the gallery? And we put it on the happiness side, you know. It's like, um, but yeah, it was it was a very um, kind of scary experience, like making things that cause that emotional, um, cause that much of emotional connection. <sighs> so I kind of made like a fractal frame. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I keep thinking of like that's just yours drawing these bubbles as different communities, and then it's it just ends up turning into this like massive organism. It becomes kind of sentient or something. So it's like a cellular thing, and it kind of kind of grows and grows grows legs. Yeah. Well, it's it's interesting. So when I look down at my paper, the future of NFTs, it's open ended. You know, it's not closed on on the side. And then the completion of it is um, AR. Looking at the screen. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's... You're that's awesome. completing it with your Moonlander. <laughs> Space. Oh, man. Yeah, there's so many fractals in in the networks. Like, and I always think about that. Like, when you're, you know, just by that that act of using these decentralized networks, what properties do humans inherit from just using those? Like, an example would be in a medium of like cable television. If you just like stare and watch cable up all day long, um, cable television specifically, or like. Um, something that you can't fast forward through commercials. <laughs> like it's a very captivating um, medium. Like how will that change your perception of reality? How will you, like what characteristics would, would carry forward when you engage in conversations with other people? You know, um, you know, like if you went just to lectures all the time and, and didn't have, uh, uh, you know, multi-directional communication too, in what ways, how would that, you know, how would that change your, your perception of reality and um so anyway i think i think that about using blockchains like how does the the medium blockchain affect humans um and what, yeah what what characteristics do we do we take on from it if any good question Cool. <sighs> yeah, I don't even know how we would measure that or track it. But. Yeah, because like you can't really track experiences across times and contexts. But isn't that kind of what art is something about for some people? Expression and communicating through space and time sharing emotions that do seem to be like in common that's why certain like quotes resonate with people poems facial expressions and art um how do you think Oh, I got another good question. How do you think uh, AI will um, change the artistic process? Or in what ways will it um, create uh, new tools for the... Yeah, because there's a couple different paths to go down there. But yeah, just curious what your thoughts are. Yeah, good question too. I mean, <laughs> wow.
so one one thought is uh it reminds me of Kandinsky's book I think 1927 um concerning the spiritual on art and he uses kind of this metaphor of a triangle with the lower more foundational layers are kind of like industrial production of like decoration things that aren't called art and then it gets more and more rarefied with kind of basically him at the top just kind of misunderstood abstract avant-garde so i wonder if in a world where so much content will be made like personalized news stories for people and things like that that like more and more will be modified by by volume uh by algorithms of different kinds and maybe that'll be okay or that will be like preferred aesthetically or from a cost perspective or something um i don't know there's probably tons of stuff to say but that's just one thing that made me think about mm -hmm. how like a more of a bulk of the content will be made by ai or whatever but you'll still want an email like from your friend not them just yeah. to dispatch uh send uh friendly email dot sh <laughs> <laughs> yeah what do you think oh man i i kind of wonder if there'll be this uh kind of like a sim symbiotic relationship where you know we we're humans are kind of like this creative force for ai like like i'm sure you've seen those that relationship between like aphids and ants let's start a new drawing let's do an ant drawing <laughs> okay okay i'm down I'm if down. we must if we must no we must we got you it's it's time. okay oh wait, wait wow. but that was really nice thanks for that one okay yeah there's um there's so like the relationship i i and i've said this for a while i think the i think i have deja vu but like the, the relationship between like ants and aphids i've seen videos where the ants um have um this this relationship they corral the aphids like on a leaf and take care of them and then they like milk them essentially but like the aphids get a longer life because they're not getting like picked off by the you know the other prey so in a weird way they're like just content being on a leaf i always wonder if like that's going to be the relationship with ai and i've said it a few times like that use that same example so it's like we wouldn't even know if we're if AI is extracting some form of value out of us, but we're just content, you know, on a leaf staring into a, uh, a dew drop, so to speak. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think, you know, when we start getting our needs met, that might be a sign like, like, why do I just keep getting these like art supplies delivered to my house and all these like amazing creative things? Like, you know, I just, yeah, I just kind of wonder if there's um, something there. Hmm. Some, yeah, something there. Hmm. But, yeah, I don't know. That's, I don't know where it's going to go. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, what's the reward function or what? what is it trying to do? Yes, yeah, so then the aphids and the ants. Like the aphids are, there's, there's, or scale insects, another group. They're like sucking sap from the plants, and then the, aph the aphids are getting moved around by the ants who tend them, kind of like a crop. Yes. Yeah, and then they get protected. And sometimes the plant even has a benefit because it's just like getting protected against worse cases of herbivory with the ant being voracious protector. Yeah, I think there's something there's something there. There's something like like I feel like the relationship with AI will be more um um 
Yeah, symbiotic to some degree. I mean, that's that's when we get to a certain level of uh, you know AI being autonomous, which seems inevitable, like full, fully uh, fully autonomous. Um, but yeah, I think if anything, creativity will be um, more valued. I feel like. Um, or more accessible, like we see, you know, the tools of the artists like hyper accessible to the masses. And I feel like, you know, AI will um, open up doors to more tools that we can, you know, import our dreams or import these other data sets. Um, or like you think things, you're like, you just think of a, an image you wanna see and then you can offer it. Um, and you know there might not be the journey that the artists have, um, you know, have purpose. Oh man, yeah. The 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 concept of like you know art having to be this long journey and this long process, this arduous thing. You know, this uh, this myth of like the artist enduring and suffering is like people want that story. But I feel like you know most people now have these amazing creative tools. So what happens when you add AI to that um, becomes hyper accessible, um, you know, and I think there'll be a category of artists that want to differentiate themselves from, you know, the, the everyday artist, you know, like the, like right now we have all these people that can literally pull out, like most people on the planet have a smartphone now. They can pull out that phone and take a picture. It may not have those characteristics of like traditional art, like form and value and things like that but ai there's there's like you know simple ai that allows optimization of those compositions and you know some cases can crop for you um like on my camera i'm moving around and like my camera's like adjusting to make the perfect composition as i move around my room and um so yeah i kind of i don't know i think we'll have a different relationship with art and um what it represents um I don't know where it's going, but just looking at the existing patterns, I think, um, yeah, it'll it'll be cool to, you know, create more uh, more tools to be creative. I almost forgot what I was doing for a second. <laughs> cool. Yeah, the answer pretty cool. How did you get into uh, um, ants? What was the what was your main um, what was your main uh, yeah the main way you got into it? Um, when I was an undergraduate, I was studying fly genetics, and then I just had uh, conversations with mentors, and they were just like, "You kind of like complex systems. You should look into ants." started learning about how they were used for all kinds of different reasons like decentralized algorithms and computational optimization and then i just applied to graduate school with and ended up with a professor who's an ant professor professor deborah gordon and then it was like well if you're going to go to grad school then you're going to be doing this ant field site For the next nice. five years and then i was like okay <laughs> <laughs> nice i've um actually wanted to do an art project with the ants um i have sketches of it too i i won one time at this like rave party thing that some friends are hosting they're like hey you should come do some live art and i'm like can i do whatever i want <laughs> and they're like yeah, no problem, right? And so I showed up. I didn't even go to like the party part of it. I literally like, I showed up with all the stuff to make gingerbread houses. So um, I brought like twenty boxes of graham crackers and like like dozens of candy that I bought from the bins at Winco. And like, we made like fifty pounds of frosting. I don't even know. It was like an insane amount of frosting. Um, and we made like. A city of um, um, a city of like graham cracker gingerbread houses, <laughs> and 
Um, and while we were doing it, I'm like, we literally should make like, um, you know, just put this whole thing inside a case on top of sand and then like see if, uh, you know, how, how ants will, um, would start living here. Like what would, what would happen if like an ant community started taking over this gingerbread city? And so, so, so since then I've always wanted to do like a really nice gingerbread house and then put it inside of a, um, you know, a well, well developed ant, uh, um, are those called terrariums or something that you could see four sides of like a um, um, city? So take custom plexiglass case with the, the ant tunnels and then underneath and then on the top would have the gingerbread house and kind of just, um, yeah, and I would assume this might be a controversial project as well. So that's why I haven't done it yet, but um, it's on the bucket list for sure. Would you say that's perform ants art? Yeah, perform ants art, yes, of course. <laughs> Yeah, I'd say the the puns they don't hurt. It helps to have a short species name. Um, cool. Let's ready to, to finish this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll okay, let it. me just finish this little part. Nice. That looks that looks awesome. Nice. That's okay. awesome. Okay. Um, all right, so I'll do what, uh, theme, 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 um, hmm, what are you thinking for the next, uh, any, any themes come to mind? I'm just looking around, I'm seeing like hard drives. So I'm thinking about like data. Yeah, data, data is a good one. Okay. Data's good. All right. You can do the right side. Yeah. I'm just amazed. My computer's streaming, copying a ton of files. It's just amazing. Like, how much better will computers get? Or have we hit peak available GPU, available RAM? Oh man, that's a good question. Yeah, I don't know, man. That's that's a good one. Um Well, I think eventually too, it's like, do they kind of go away? We don't even know they're there. You know, it's not like, what's the, um, yeah, what's the end form look like? Or not the end form, but what's the, the next form look like? Of the computer? Yeah. Is it all AR? Is it all VR? I mean, like, it seems like most people have, uh, you know, smartphones and, Laptops and desktops are kind of, um, you know, more for a, a certain type of gamer or a certain type of, uh, you know, industry. You'll still need uh, the big server farms. Yeah. I thought we would see um, scrolls, like that would be the next iteration. It was either going to be like flip phones or scrolls and like a digital, like a newspaper. Yeah. Yeah. I thought I, that's kind of what I predicted a couple years ago. Like, what you would see by now, because why well, have, it would have more screen. I think it just, yeah, I just thing is it... that wouldn't be carryable in your pocket or your hand as well. You'd look like the town crier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, <For sure. laughs> what are you crying about? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I was, I was wrong with that. I just thought we'd have flexible screens and they'd be like everywhere. And, um, yeah, there would be some interesting innovations in that, but we didn't see too many. I think the handheld format is just really powerful. Oh, yeah. Looking at your hands and 
doing stuff with your hands without looking. Both of those are very different, but they're very powerful. And in fact, that's almost what the difference is between like the dissecting under the scope with the camera versus not, or like, like when I'm looking at the paper, I'm getting the direct visual feedback and my body's positioned in the way it expects. But then in the AR, you can get like the visual feedback, but you could be like in a different body position. Which can oh, just yes. like change your... I've only done like the 3D stuff a limited number of times, but of each time I've done like the illusions where you're kind of hesitant to step off the edge of a building you know, and uh, yeah, like it shapes where you step and don't, even though you kind of can know that it's not that way. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, yeah, VR is interesting. I, I most people I know that have them will like use them for a couple weeks and they just kind of get bored of them. <laughs> they're like, they're like really into it for a while and they just set it aside and just like, eh. So, um, but yeah, man, I, where things are going will be interesting. I kind of wonder if it'll be like, you know, I say this analogy a lot in crypto, like we're building the pipes under the, under the city, but we haven't built the city yet. I kind of wonder if like the pipes are like right now, what we think of as the main interface. So eventually we won't even have, you know, be holding you know it'll be so um concealed like you won't necessarily even be holding a physical phone you won't be holding a physical headset there'll be something else there'll be some other um way to interface with the computer that is yeah just so far out of our understanding <laughs> yeah I, I i mean i i know what you mean yeah because it could be like just integrated with the environment Yes. There has yeah. to be something physically there, even if only with a wave presence. Yes, for sure. But like you could be out in an open field and there could just be like embedded devices that you know are tracking you in the field or something like that and you're interfacing and <laughs> doing some weird stuff in the field. <laughs> yes. That's kind of where yeah, like cool. Yeah, Yours looks thinking. like a uh interesting. Um, yeah. What was your, uh, what was your first computer? Um, it was like in our family's, um, kind of office slash sleep room. And it was just a early Mac, not sure the model, but play some games with the family. Kind of interesting old memories nice. was it a <laughs> color one color one or a black and white one or i think it had color i don't know i'm not that that old yeah but um yeah interesting period as just the internet was taking off like aol and everything um, oh yeah what, what were your computers uh, my first one, well, I, I mean, I was, I was pretty poor growing up, and um, I bought a, and this is in, like, early, uh, like, 94, I'm guessing. Uh, there was a, a garage sale at my my school. I went to, uh, um, so it was middle school, elementary school. It was, like, a one-room schoolhouse, and I got uh, a Commodore it's like not the Commodore 64. It's like way before that. So my first computer was like this ridiculously huge. Um, like it, I still have it. I had to keep it. It's just too incredible. Um, tiny green screen, um, like barely, like one person can barely lift it. It's that heavy. It's solid metal and um, it glows in the dark. Strangely enough, <laughs> it's like I think it ha it has like a CRT and like. 
Um, it would be one of those computers are like, oh yeah, they probably use that to like, you know, uh, put a spaceship on the moon. It's that, that type of looking computer. Um, and then um, I ended up getting like a hand-me-down um, 512K Mac or something like that. I'm like, I'm pretty sure there was like no hard drive in it either. So remember the colorful um, Mac and the one button mouse in the computer labs, Oregon Trail. Oh yeah. Typing class. But like, it's funny, like probably, well, I guess I wonder how computer education has changed like five years earlier before the colors of Mac that couldn't have existed. And then five years later, it was like a different design. So it's like a very fast um, age cohort who would get exposed to a certain design, especially like regionally. Yeah, I remember um, using computers in like first grade and there was like the, it was definitely the Apple IIe. And um, there was a lot of uh, immigrants from uh, Mexico and from La they were like Laotian or, gosh, it's so hard to remember that far back, but um, the, I, the Mexican students, um, barely spoken in English, but they learned how to program the computers and they hacked the score on the game to make them look like they won the English game. So like they literally like changed their score because they, they were using them for like, like lessons, you know, like, Oh, we'll just go, they put us on the computer, like go play this, play this game. And, um, and I, yeah, that's how I learned <laughs> how to modify the, the computers is watching them. Um, Essentially, just like hack the, you know, change their uh, their score and their ranking on the on the computer. So, yeah, it's pretty amazing. Without without speaking much English, they could do that. Oregon Trail can't be hacked. <laughs> it's the rock solid. Yeah, we definitely had that too. That was one of those uh, those awesome games. Nice. Yeah, it's really fun with the two sides. We we do a lot of like two sides drawing side by side in person, but I've really never done it digitally. Yeah. Ready for yeah, another, another one? Yeah, yeah, I'm done. Okay. Um, anyone want to? Yeah, if anyone gives a theme, otherwise, um, um, yeah, theme, theme, theme. Yeah, I cleared it. it should just be a second. Let's do awareness. Ooh, that's a good one. Okay. That Kind of makes me think, oh, what's that concept? I'm trying to remember this concept. I uh, learned about philosophy too. Um, there's like always an ultimate observer, right? Um, always an ultimate observer. Let's hmm. see. What does that mean? Or how do we oh, know? Yeah, in that context, I think it's like if you're in a room, there's like, when you're all alone, you basically can't exist because you have to be observed. Um, you know, you have to have like another point of reference to like exist, I guess. I think that's the concept. Um, well, then you're like, well, how does that, that person observing you exist? And then it's like, 
well, they need to be observed. I mean, you can't just be observed by the first person because that would just be like, are they aware? Are they conscious? Are they, um, it's like, well, then you have to have a third person. And then it, you know, following, following that logic, there's some entity that is <laughs> like <laughs> creating an observation of those previous individuals. God, I'm totally butchering that. No, no, let, let me try to rephrase it or how I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Please so, yeah. um, it's like saying there has to be like similar to an unmoved mover or like an uncaused cause that kind of starts the causal chain for creation. That's a, um, a question of like, maybe there has to be an ultimate observer to kind of induce a whole chain of observation. Because yeah. Yeah. That's a good way. That's a good way. To, that's a better way to describe it. Sorry. Because they can't, if you believe that the organisms or whatever systems can't co instantiate their awareness. Yeah. And then it's like, well, who's the, who's the ultimate observer then? Like, oh shit. Okay, here's let's let's go to a question in the live chat while we consider. Oh this. yeah. Sup guys, hey minted yesterday. I have a game related oh. question. What kind of applications do you see for NFTs in video games? Maybe for NFT art specifically, maybe in mobile games. Um, there's a lot of NFT games out there already. Um, and I think, um, you know, I always reference Alien Worlds. Um, <laughs> in uh, in Alien Worlds, we have um, a lot of crossovers. So they use art on some of the cards. I mean, all the cards are technically art of sorts, but they've done like crossovers with other community artists. And they're producing, um, you know, these playing cards that are used in game, but they also could be collectible or um, you know, certain other categories of art. So there's like trading cards that, um, and so, I mean, that's that's one, one aspect, um, but you know, it's, it's not a full on video game. I could see um, many NFTs being plugged into uh, video games when the, when the legal um, stuff is figured out. But I feel like right now it's really hard to like, you know, drop, um, items of value in these like traditional corporate created video games. Like they don't really have a, a clear path on how to do that, how to like make it fair and accountable. And, um, and in different jurisdictions, there's different rules. There's a game called Blankos, B-L-A-N-K-O-S. Um, and it runs on uh, EOSIO technology. That's one a game I'd look at. It's a full-fledged um, uh, video game. Um, with characters that can move around and um, yeah, definitely check out that one. It's really cool. Let me give a thought. It's like a total, um, not in the gaming world or anything. Like it makes me, because the person asked about like NFT art in games. So then it makes me think about how you could have like your profile. Like this is my favorite picture for people who I like. This is my favorite picture for backgrounds where I want to be like in a learning state of mind. So you kind of define your preferences for what images you like. And then apps kind of respect your preferences or games. It's like the loading page will look the same because everyone uses just say, okay, use their preferred loading page style, kind of like Linux. And then if you wanted to, you could own the NFTs for those images just to kind of support the creator or to demonstrate authenticity. Yeah, that's a good idea. I like that. Anyone in the chat I, can definitely like write anything or totally give ideas. We're totally just making stuff up, but continue. I also, I like... Um... I like where things are going. Like we saw with the NFTX that um, some of the community members put together um, or added Curo cards to, where it basically allows you to collateralize your Curo card. So you like put it up with some Ethereum and then it mints a fungible token called Curio. And um, one of my huge realizations is like that is a perfect cross chain 
representation of curio cards, right? So you could send that fungible token into other games to represent any, you know, floor card of curio or just represent the project generally. So then, um, you know, that could be used in like a treasure chest. Like you open up the treasure chest, you get curio coins. Um, I mean, maybe even get a representation of um, a pack of the cards, you know? So there's, you know, there's some really cool things where you're, um, you know, taking out these cons, like breaking apart the concepts of like what an NFT is, what a fungible token is, um, you know, I mean, NFT in the pure sense, I would say is like rarely used. Like you see that, you know, one, one of a kind work of art, but then in evaluating it, um, that's really difficult. Um, so if it's used in a game, like you're like, well, what's, you know, is it just there as an element to be viewed? Is it just supplemental or is it experiential? Um, does it have supplemental functionality to the gameplay? Does it need to? Could it just be um, something static? You know, some people think art is literally just something you put behind your couch and um, appreciate it once in a while. Um, you know, and uh, I'm more interested in like, how is art um, made in kind of the, how we're doing it? You know, it's a co-creative process. It's not just saying like it's this or it's that. It's like, you know, we're we're having a multi-directional form of communication. So, um, so I tend to look more at aspects where art would be used in uh, games in that in that um, methodology. Cool. I like the kind of art as a game approach too. And there's genres, and you know, sometimes you want to play chess of one kind or change the rules a little bit but it's like a game that rewards creativity a lot hmm. there's a surreal a surrealist art game um oh man what was that one called it's like you fold over the paper and then you uh oh exquisite corpse Exquisite corpse. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, those, those are like, those can be life changing for some people. Like when you, when they see that for the first time, they're like, no way, this is what art is. Like they're <laughs> like, it opens up doors to, uh, um, you know, getting people to think about, um, you know, engagement in, uh, the artistic creation process for sure. Yeah. Ready for maybe, uh, let's do one or two quick ones. More? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's do, let's pick one theme, do it, and then if anyone in the chat has a theme they want to suggest, just uh, speak now, and then we'll do that for the last one. So, cool. Thanks for that one, Max. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. We'll, we'll put, put it back up. I just want to make uh, one, if you can. One sec, there it is. So I know that it like, you know, means everything and nothing, et cetera. But like, kind of reminds me of the clouds around, uh, I don't know, a planet or Mount Olympus or something kind of rings around energy rings, vortices, layers, like chakra. And then it kind of yeah. reminds me of like a, a baby's crib <laughs> and the UFO, yeah. kind of like the origin of awareness in the childhood, something like Ooh. that. That's awesome. I didn't even think about that. I like that. I like that idea a lot. I was thinking of um, something where there's a lot of different perceptions depending where you are. Like there's different dimensions depending where you're you're at on the on the shape. Um, cool. All right. So one more theme you pick, and then yeah, one yeah. Um, um, theme of uh, live chat's choice. Um. Um. Oh man. Um. Holidays. Holidays. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Happy holidays to everybody. <laughs> it's a holiday season. Yeah, right? it's it's wild. Yeah. It's like the end of November. I love the two, by the way. It's like Curio Art Stream number two. It's two two ones, eleven, twenty two, the day, twenty twenty one, two PM PT, twenty two UTC. Ex extremely a two dance stream. Oh, lots of twos, yeah. Years ago, even like 2014, 2015, in um, Palo Alto, California, 
mm-hmm. there was this guy who would stand out there on the streets and um uh he would hand out flyers and he was like hyping people for the date february 22nd 2022 and then <laughs> and then it'd be like what's special about this date and he'd go like it's two 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 or something like that and it was like he took that pun to a high level but <laughs> years later i'm excited for that date so it, repeat, it makes you wonder like, how, on a live stream. how he got how did he get into that like makes you wonder his story like what like what was your path in <laughs> into date becoming the, the two guy yeah exactly oh man Oh, also, I got um, I got a few test um, eight by ten curio prints for twenty four, twenty five, twenty six. So nice. yeah, I'll send them to anybody who just requests it. Sign prints that you don't need to own any curio, but they're just test runs. Nice, that's awesome. Yeah, I had sent you like the smaller size. Yeah, those are awesome. And then I have your stickers, but I, 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 you know, get sticker. Don't want to, don't want to waste the sticker on something that something shouldn't be stuck to. I guess yeah, that's why the, it's a pack. Yeah. I ordered some more of those. I had to, they're, they're, uh, yeah, I'm getting, starting to get pictures of people sticking them up all, all legally everywhere. Makes me so happy. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah you should consider making stickers man those those would be awesome um and actually kind of affordable i do um screen printer ones and since yours are black and white it'll save a lot of uh save a lot of money on those um but yeah that would be awesome i would definitely put one of those on my laptop well, yeah, I mean, I hope we could find people in the community who are like into printing and yeah, I don't know, want to do it because you can't just order a huge amount up front. So I don't know. Some, that'd be a cool thing for somebody who loves Curio and wants to do like a community printing effort. Not, not like I me mean, working with the artists just to do it in a way that was, I don't know, clear, maybe oh, yeah. some kickback to the Dow or something. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. I would, I would consider giving them a uh, permission to like produce a certain sticker or a pack of stickers or something. That'd yeah. Be, or just cool. um, like, since it's a, it's a specific, so uh, just totally, totally, speculating here of course not just one random person sharing their perspective like <laughs> only yeah. for the cards one through 30 for example so then it'd be like that kind of minting and printing whatever it is they're they only i don't know or I don't, maybe that simplifies it or just to, to clarify the most requested specific merch pieces for the original set yeah there's oh man so many fun things to do with that We went hiking at like a Berryessa this weekend. Oh, nice. It was very nice. It's near Napa. Was it, was it uh, overcast? No, it was pretty warm. Oh, but nice. it was just a nice hike. It's so beautiful up here in Chico with all the trees right now. It's like just amazing colors. Like really, really, it's it's the best time of year to be up here. Um, it is getting 
a little cold for my taste, um, but it's, it's quite beautiful. Oh, interesting here. Two kind of vertical oriented patterns. I'm going to try to like play off your design too and get some. Um, it's really hard because I have to look at the, um, the um, other monitor. <laughs> Yeah, we should definitely do this again. Try to get some other uh, other folks to contribute their layers too. <laughs> oh man, it's fun. Yeah, there's stuff that, like I normally would never draw too. You know, it's like I um, I'm just doing black and white sketches, so it's it's really getting me out of my bubble to think differently, which is awesome. I mean, that's yeah. I feel like people people pay for this experience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cool. We'll do one last one. Let's do um, like renewal or something like that. Oh, that's a really awesome. Okay. Just as a closing okay. note, kind yeah. of a closing, hopeful and uh, you know, forward looking note. Okay, that's awesome. I like that. Yeah, I just like doing having a session, chill, talk to you, learn a little bit about NFTs. Make a bunch of interesting art. I think the QR thing really would be useful. I want to. I want to yeah, pay someone bring, to build it. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> let's bring, no no let's brainstorm on, on that because I I think I think we can do it with um there's we could do a script on some other we could do it we could figure it out. I think the the okay. the best would be if it could be verifiably that yeah. ETH address. Because yeah, they could I would just say I. They could just make a fake video, and then just say like, "Oh, this was you at this time," and have the QR code saying that too. Yeah, and almost say we can mint like auto mint them too to like another chain or something. Like, there's so many fun things to do. Something that doesn't uh, take up too much gas to to deal with it, but yeah, lots of ideas there. Oh. Hmm. 
kind of like this idea too of like going back in the video and being like, oh, that's a cool drawing that could be expanded on. You could just like literally download the screenshot or the still from the slide well, and be like, because that's I, the base for the even, next piece. Yeah, no, totally. Like you'd have in order to cite which drawing you were talking about, you'd have to say which second it, of the video it was because I was moving the things around. Oh, yeah. So it might look oh, different at like given differences. Cool. Thanks, Minted Yesterday. Anyone else watching? We might be able to try doing like a Twitter spaces in conjunction. So we get, you know, another dimension of engagement or we, I don't know. What do you think about that? Having another essentially a uh, audio layer. Yeah, Try I, to get people to whatever, have. whatever people like suggest. It's kind of like if you have one question, other people probably have it. So, I mean, whatever people want to do and I think they should just let us know. But um, yeah, I'm kind of open. After all, this is only the second art stream. <laughs> so we can try all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Nice red and black on both sides. I noticed like you put this white circle on a lot of them. At the end. Oh, yeah. What does it mean? Um, I don't know. I, I, I think I'm, I'm just thinking of like something that alludes to movement or transformation or kind of um like i was trying to make these kind of spheres that are moving moving off the surface cool just easy to draw <laughs> easy to draw shape yeah okay well cool Fun times, dude. Um, yeah, that was awesome. Let me come Let's back do it to again. Chair. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Um, so cool. If you watch this far, congratulations. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, just let us know what kind of streams you want to see and what kind of art we can do. Because nice. I probably have uh, 15 pieces of cool art. So. Oh, man. Awesome experiment. That was great, yeah. man. All right. Thanks. Peace, Max. Awesome. Talk to you later, man. Okay. See you guys soon. Bye, Bye. everybody.